Now that we're a little more comfortable with the structure side of Reactor and how things get cabled up, let's go back to the panel and talk about a bunch of the options that we have for controls and interface elements. So first thing I'm gonna do is add a fader. Here in the structure view, all that is is a little box that says fader, it's got an output. But when I look at it on the panel, I'll see there's an actual fader there that I can grab and adjust. There's a couple switches on this bar here, that allow us to split the pane and show both the structure and the panel at the same time. Usually I would use this top and bottom. And I think for this video capture environment, it might be helpful to do the side by side here. It's also a switch to uh, flip them between the two panes and another one to just shut the second pane. Earlier, when we were looking at the side pane, and focused on the browser, we saw there were some of these other tabs that were not activated yet. Now that we have some stuff loaded up, these are all active. We're going to look now at the properties pane, which is this checkbox here. Depending what I click on, it'll show me properties for a variety of different things. Like here's the ensemble properties. If I click on the fader, with that selected, it shows me the fader properties. So let's have a look at some of these fader properties. I can set my minimum and my maximum. I can set my step size. Maybe I want to set my maximum to be 10 and my step size to be 2. Now as I move my fader up and down, it's going to skip and snap to 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. If I wanted to set this to a maximum of, say, 1,000, as I move it up and down, even though my step size is set to 1, see I'm not getting every individual increment of 1. That's because of my mouse resolution. Still set to 127. I could change that to 1000. And now, as I move fader, you see my cursor has to move quite a bit further to get the same amount of change. But I do get every incremental change. It's very different than if I have the mouse resolution set to, say, 100. Then also I could use this in combination with the fine tuning factor. Hold down the shift key. And I can fine tune. If we look at the view pane in the properties for the fader, here's where we can control the look of the fader in the panel. We can switch on whether or not it's visible. Believe it or not, that's actually helpful. We can turn the label on and off. It's called fader right now, but it could be called something more meaningful, maybe bandwidth. And then that label might be useful. But we can show or hide it. We can show the image or not. It's kind of interesting. It still shows the value. And I can show and hide the value. There's three sizes to choose from here. But that's really the width. The length is chosen here in pixels. And under style, we have the option to go vertical or horizontal. Or notice that one of the options is knob. As far as reactor is concerned, there's no difference between a fader or a knob besides what it looks like. The functions otherwise are the same. We show or hide the scale, that's these markings along the side. And show or hide the groove, which can be useful sometimes. And you can always load your own image to really customize this. Here there's an AB panel for the fader. These are two separate settings for the view of this panel. And I can change them between A and B, they can be different. So that kind of gives you two different viewing modes. Maybe I have it invisible on the B panel, but visible on the A. And then when I switch in this view, you can see the difference. A better example would be if we had more than one here. I'm going to copy that. Now I'm going to use the shortcut Command E, which will unlock this panel so I can move these things around. We'll be doing plenty of that. 
It's also a little lock icon here. So let's say on A, I want to see all three of them. But on B, I only want to see the first one. Now when I switch between the two here, it doesn't shut those values off, it just hides them. And those are your faders and knobs.